Breaking, breaking news. Demetrius Andrade, David Benavidez is going on next this November. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, it is officially confirmed. I'm on Demetrius Andrade's page, and he posted this. Benavidez versus Andrade. He says it is go time on November 25th in Las Vegas. I'm coming for you, David Benavidez. He tagged him, and then he has a code, link in bio, to get your pre-sale tickets. Wow. Amazing fight. Amazing fight. David Benavidez, he took to his social media, and he confirmed it as well. Benavidez versus Andrade. I'll do a longer video. I just want to give you guys the news straight away. And David Benavidez says, I'm back on November 25th. Get ready, Demetrius Andrade. It's going to be a war in Las Vegas. Zap Judah in the comments. My dude. Corvette. So I think it's an amazing fight. I'm really happy. And I'm happy that the rumors were true that the fight is now happening and taking place. There were at some point thoughts that this fight could take place in San Antonio, Texas, but maybe they decided there was better money or better exposure for this particular time for this fight. If they did it in Las Vegas, because this is right before Thanksgiving. So to put it in maybe a tourist place like Las Vegas, where people could be traveling, Maybe that makes more sense. Again, I'm not on the the back end, so I don't know exactly what changed it. But I think Las Vegas is a good place for this fight. And it's a bit more neutral territory. Because David Benavidez, he's Mexican and Ecuadorian, and he's fought in Texas before. I've actually been to his fights in Texas. He was on the Errol Spence undercard, fought Jay Leon Love. I think it was on the Mikey Garcia undercard. So he he's definitely fought in Texas. So he would definitely probably be the, the crowd favorite in Texas. But you put it somewhere on the West Coast. One guy's from Arizona, so pretty close. And then Andrade is from Rhode Island. But for me, I'm just glad that the fight is happening. I think it's truly a great fight. And to be honest, they're putting Canelo to shame because Canelo just fought a 154-pounder. And then you got my man Benavidez who in one year is going from Caleb Plant fighting him, bad blood type of fight, to fighting Andrade, while Canelo is fighting guys that don't even fight at 168 pounds, and Canelo Alvarez is the super middleweight champion. So why is the super middleweight undisputed champion fighting people that don't even fight in the division? That's a serious question. And I know the Canelo fans, they get mad, but the truth is the truth. People say, oh, Ego, you're hating on Canelo. I'm telling you what it is. He's fighting. He just fought Jermel Charlo, and that's a guy who doesn't fight at 68, doesn't even fight at 60. He fights at 154 pounds, where he's undisputed. And the other reason why, me personally, why I don't like the the Canelo Charlo fight, it's already too late now, is it was just a senseless fight that messed up other fights. Now, I do like Tim Zhu versus Brian Mendoza. I think that's a great fight. But realistically, that fight should have been Jermel Charlo and Tim Zhu for Undisputed instead of Jermel Charlo moves up to 68, loses horrifically, and he gets stripped after they announce his name. And then Tim Zhu becomes a champion by default. And Tim Zhu, he's not given the opportunity to fight an actual champion to become a champion. It's always going to be better when you have a fight where you have the opportunity to dethrone a champion and take somebody's belt his or her belt as opposed to it's just a vacant belt or you just get elevated right so tim zoo should have been fighting jermail charlo 
he was the mandatory for Jermel Charlo. But then Jermel Charlo, he went up to fight Canelo, didn't really make sense. And then it just throws off everything. So Canelo should have been fighting David. You see how everything's a chain reaction? Canelo should have been fighting David Benavidez. And Jermel Charlo should have been fighting Tim Zhu. In a perfect world, that's how it should have went. But nonetheless, we get other great fights this weekend. You got Tim Zhu versus Brian Mendoza. And then you got Benavidez stepping up to fight against Andrade in lieu of Canelo not fighting either Andrade or Benavidez. They're fighting each other. So that's why I'm saying they're putting Canelo to shame because they're showing no fear. This is a difficult style for both. Benavidez is going to take on a crafty, awkward, really awkward southpaw in Demetrius Andrade, who's confident. He's a U.S. Olympian, just cut his his hair, so he's, you know, on to a new chapter. He just got with Al Heyman in Showtime and PBC, so he's just starting pretty much starting fresh all, all around, from cutting his dreads off to signing with Showtime and PBC, something I think he should have been done a long time ago, but better late than never. You see he's in shape. He can punch. He can move. He can fight toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I mean, it's just a great fight. All in all, it's a great fight. I'm definitely looking forward to it. And he looks like he's feeling out, even though he just got to this division. He definitely looks like he's feeling out already. And I think he, he probably had to leave 160, to be honest. Just from looking at this, I don't see how he was making 160. He looked kind of big. Pause. Look at him. And he's tall. You know, I've interviewed... Andre and been around him and stuff like that. He's 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 like six foot, six foot one, six foot one and a half, whatever. And yeah, I don't think he could make 160 anymore. So kudos to these guys for giving the fans a great Thanksgiving treat. Benavidez, great fight this year with Plant, and then now he's running it straight away. He's not taking no tune up. He he's he's doing what he said he wanted. He said he wanted the big names. He got them. I'll do another video to really talk about this fight. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Subscribe. It's free. And I'm out. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube. Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work.